39 degrees at 836. 836. What are we doing up so late, T-Rex? Well, sleep is very important. So is not freezing your fingers. Okay, first observation, those are flaky clouds. We have what I call low barometer cold, and that is opposite of the inversion we've talked about so much with a high barometer. With this lower barometer, you have instability in the atmosphere. So it's much colder aloft than down near the ground. And if you put it in an ocean or a great lake or some mountains, any moisture that's available is going to lift and condensate and perhaps precipitate. <laughs> So that you have Virga coming out of the clouds over there, over the ocean east of Hull right now. It's a very dry air mass, so it's uh, it's tough to make it snow. You need a low pressure system or a cold front or something like that, or a lake or an ocean. So we'll have ocean effect snow over the ocean, but we have lake effect snow that's begun. Uh, that's not lake effect right there, but the clouds are making it into Western Massachusetts. Look at the radar this morning. You have the snow band coming all the way across New York into Western Massachusetts. Oh yes, and while it's on my mind, a, a request this morning. I love requests, Brian Williamson. Daughter, coming home from Bucknell. Is that the daughter there in your image? In the pink, is she driving? She's gonna be just south of those lake bands uh, from Fredrickson, Pennsylvania into Boston today. Uh, there could be some snowflakes in the air anytime, anywhere, but those are pretty focused bands and we have one band focused all the way into Vermont, Western Massachusetts, Killington, still snowing. Looks like they turned off the guns on North Ridge and are grooming it for the first lift served skiing of the season. I think one in North Carolina opened last week, but in New England today, Killington pass holders at noon, getting on the K1 and North Ridge is open and Superstar will be open uh, for the World Cup, they get the FIS approval. So Killington and so many others, let's see who's opening. Uh, Stowe's opening on Saturday. I think Sugarloaf might be opening today or tomorrow. And so we have ski season and it feels like it too. Uh, for those of you that don't ski and really loved that 70 degree weather, this is a thermal shock and that's a real thing too. Uh, when you have sort of September weather and then all of a sudden it goes to December weather and that's what happens in a very high amplitude flow. I'm gonna try and get below the wind here. Check the rain gauge. It did rain more after yesterday's uh, morning observation, 0.07. Uh, the mountains did get about seven and a half inches of snow, by the way, and it's not done. It's gonna snow, upslope snow in the green mountains and spots uh, with several fronts coming through. Anyhow, the high amplitude flow, that's a, that was a major ridge over Alaska and it broke into pieces and now uh, some of the warmth is going to go off. The warmth that was in Alaska is going to go to the western United States. But really, cold is overwhelming the pattern in pretty much all of North America. I want to show this. Uh, this is the uh, 500 millibar flow. You can see that air coming right down from the North Pole. And then into late next week, what an odd-looking omega block with a dent on the top. I don't know how else to describe it. You have a deep trough in the west and you have a deep trough in the east and you've got a, a serious batch of energy going over the top of that block. You know that the alpha, um, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, eta, theta, uh, the, the Greek alphabet, it looks like omega. Uh, so an omega block and there is going to be a major storm forming uh, near the east coast out of the Gulf of Mexico late next week and for Thanksgiving. GS, GFS pretty much has a major nor'easter and the euro says it's kind of far to the south and misses us and, and it's just cold and dry for Thanksgiving. Kind of leaning toward the GFS right now, but uh, right lately I've had my more faith in the Euro, but I think the Euro is going to adjust north. Uh, in the meantime, it's just uh, waves of energy along an Arctic boundary, and that creates these instability clouds. And the worst or best of the cold, depending on your perspective, is going to be if you're going to the ski show this weekend and you leave the ski show in Boston on Sunday evening, the wind is going to be gusting past 40 miles per hour with a temperature in the 20s, wind chill factor on Sunday night, even in Boston, is going to be sub-zero. So if you're going skiing, think full-on gear, <laughs> wraps and layers and all that. It is cold weekend. Uh, this is just sort of the beginning of this cold spell. The heart of the cold is going to be over the weekend. And then very interesting, late next week, we have both a negative North Atlantic oscillation, think Greenland block, and a negative 
Pacific North America pattern. And that means you get both fuel coming in and out of the Pacific and energy from Canada. And it can be crazy stormy pattern with such cold available and the energy coming off the Pacific, almost like a, an El Nino type situation. So there are gonna be storms on both coasts next week. What else did I wanna talk about? So yeah, surf was up yesterday for a time. Friends were looking out at the surf. Uh, I think there were a couple of riders out there. The, the wind from the east abruptly shifted to west and it cleaned up and there was about a uh, 10 foot, 11 seconds, something like that at Stellwagen. And the skiers, of course, uh, snowboarders. All right, I'll leave you with uh, my friends hiking and having fun in the mountains uh, adjacent to Canada in Vermont yesterday afternoon on natural snow. Thank you, Josh, Tommy, and Beck, and everybody for hooking me up with that video. All right, see you at the ski show. Where'd you go, Rex? <laughs> Pre-season obstacles exist. <laughs>